Hello and welcome to another episode of the Plus 63 HP podcast. I am one of your hosts, John Clemente. Alongside with me, as always, is my bestest best friend in the entire world, John Blomi. Chabax, how are you doing? What's up? Uh, exhausting, exhausting week, but uh, happy to be here and uh, happy to be talking about our movie, our review. We're back. We are back with a new episode of Plus 63 HP Reviews Edition. In this particular episode, we are going to be discussing the latest installment to the Scream franchise, Scream 6. So it has recently dropped on streaming so more people can watch it for the ones that have missed it in the cinema. So we are going to provide a little bit of synopsis, our thoughts and opinions about the movie, dive deep a little bit into the themes, rate it so you, so that you'll have information whether you should watch it or not. So uh, housekeeping, if, you, if this is the first time that you've uh, visited our channel, thank you very much for the view. We have multiple shows across multiple days of the week on www.youtube.com slash plus six three HP. So in order to be able to um, be notified when those new episodes drop. We hope that you subscribe, hit like, put a comment, hit that notification bell so you'll get notified when new episodes drop. Um, as mentioned, on Mondays and Tuesdays, or most Mondays and Tuesdays, we drop episodes where we review a TV series or a show. On Wednesdays, we drop or we record, uh, we drop the recording of our very, very first D&D campaign. Uh, it's been almost two years. It has been fun. We've never played D&D before, so we started during the pandemic, and it has been a joy ever since. On Thursdays, we usually drop our Reacts episode where we have a curated list of trailers, short videos, featurettes, clips. We watch them, and uh, we gauge how hyped we are about these upcoming cop temp by giving it a plus or a minus. And on Fridays, uh, Chubax and our other bestest best friend, RJ, cannot have enough of D&D. So they spun a second campaign where they are bad guys. And those episodes drop every Friday. So new comment dropping almost every day of the week. So please like, subscribe, and join us for the ride. And let's grow this community of like-minded individuals that like enjoying good content all over the place. So as mentioned this week, we have, again, we're going back. So we've been reviewing a lot of series the past couple of weeks, the past couple of months. Now we finally have a new foray to the movie uh, reviews category. And this week, we will be discussing Scream 6. Before we dive into the specificities and uh, spoiler territory of Scream 6, uh, and the new Scream reboot, requel franchise in general. Trebox, give me like a short uh, non-spoiler review what you thought about the movie once you saw it. I really enjoyed it. I, I liked it. it um, it's just uh, gotten to the point where it's so hard to predict it now. So I'm just mm -hmm. having fun. I mean, it's still not the smartest. I mean, the reveal was a little wasn't the best part for me like the reveal of the ending but it was still great and i still had fun and i, I still enjoyed it i i like i like the new cast um i i like the characters and it's just uh yeah it's a nice play on i love how it's like we already had the rules on the first cream but as as cinemas evolve and the horror slashers evolve the rules are still applicable in that they're also evolving and it's more fun. It's still fun, I mean. It's not mm -hmm. more fun, it's still mm -hmm. fun. So it's just, yeah, a lot of the jokes that they're doing is tongue-in-cheek and I, we're in on it and it, it's fun. And there were, there were a lot of good jump scares. My, my wife was, you know, jumping a lot. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just a good guess to who's the bad guy. Because at this point, and I, I, I do love Sam's arc. That's something that's kind of becoming very unique to the to the franchise, mm -hmm. and I hope they go yeah. they go deep into it in the next ones. And I'm excited to see it, where it goes. Yeah, I I love I this. I love this. this more than the last one. Oh, oh, I don't know if okay. it was New York or uh, or just the cast. 
I again, I, I'm, I live in New York. I recognize a lot of the places where they tried to film, like even like the first, the very first um, the bar uh, uh, scene, uh-huh. uh, where it's like it's the speakeasy. It was, oh, it's so difficult to find a place where there's no signing, uh, where there's no sign outside. Which is my main complaint about these fucking hipster bars that's been popping that, up everywhere. That is real. There's, there's it no happens. Sign. They don't put signage because they go, oh, we're too cool. You need to know where we are. Fuck you. Put the sign, right? Or find the make your your door number more prominent or something like that. So it's I was even even with the trailers that we've seen like last year, I was very interested. I was already going to watch it to see how they you know what make take New York as a character a, make New York as a character but again how are they going to navigate the idea that there are so many people everywhere right um and see how if that will heighten or deaden the experience of killing because there's so many people here so in some spots they were very successful like we're showing in the screen right now during the part of the trailer where they were at the bodega that's very clear like oh that's cool yeah you know it's you know, I I had fun with that, but you know the part where you know uh spoil uh, no spoilers yet, but the part where somebody gets stabbed in a fucking train that will never happen. I don't care how packed the train is. Everybody is so aware about everybody. That's just plain stupid. But they were able to go back and forth where it was very entertaining. But like what you mentioned, the thing that I love the most about the requel, the sequel to the requel, is they are very very self aware about where they are their surroundings they're not stupid anymore everybody's uh is a uh, well that's uh, my so i have a small nitpick on two particular decisions that were so for me very stupid but yeah go ahead yeah but i still for me like i i like that all right there are some elements of the movie where it's like oh you're so stupid like how did you let x get that close or something like that right or how did you not recognize that there were happening here or somebody took your knives? Or, there are so many smaller things that are, for me, plot devices to push the story over. That's why I gave it a pass. But in general, I do like the idea that everybody knows that you know they are hunted. Everybody knows they need, need to stick together. Everybody knows that they are all, all um, um, uh, suspects. So... Uh, and everybody could die. I like that the fact that, you know, although they had to mention it verbally, like, you know, because this is a requel of a franchise. Uh, it's not, you know, it oh, it's bigger budget, more deaths, more elaborate deaths. Uh, uh, saying those new rules, right? Gave, you know, just double down on the fact that, oh, yeah, you're right. It's a franchise now, so... Even the main characters could die, All right? So I like that idea too. That you know, they're they're force feeding us certain things, mm -hmm. uh, but in general, mostly on the pacing of the kills and the suspense thriller part, I think I enjoyed it. Like they did not overstay their welcome. Mm -hmm. You know, there'll be a little break, a little levity, different conversation, and then some more killings, and then a little break, a little bit of levity, more. So I think you know the the new the creator or director of this, um, uh, they know what they know that their audience is smarter or more desensitized. They're not one hundred percent correct in all those things that they do. Like mm -hmm. it still seems stupid. Like you know, every time I see Ghostface, just he gets hit all the time. Just fucking grab the mask. Right? Well, him getting or hit is keep... part of the charm of Ghostface. Like he's True. not he's and not I... he's not perfect. But yeah, there are times when he's down and and you can wail on him. But yeah, I mean he he is a killer, so Yeah. I mean, that's uh, well again, that's the part where it needs it still needs to be a movie. You can't like have them unmask one or multiple of the ghost faces early, too early, or it's going to like ruin the surprise already. So but yeah, with that, I'll turn it over to you to give us a quick rundown. We can talk about our favorite or least favorite things about the movie and provide our ratings. So oh wait, just checking now. We we scored Scream five, uh six and six and RJ with a seven. Oh, okay. So, 
Okay. So story, okay. Uh, so we catch up on uh, Sam and Tara. Now uh, Tara is going to college. Oh no! Wait, wait. Black. We forgot the intro. We go. We start intro. Uh, we oh, get into intro. The, yeah. The typical. Uh, I like that they took their time with this. They they start with the intro of uh, the typical uh, hot girl professor with an accent. I like her. Uh, with this. Uh, so actually, this is uh, the lady that gets. Um, uh, confused all the time with Margot Robbie. There's like three of them, right? The three Margot Robbies. Oh, one is the one in the sex, the Netflix, uh, sex, what's that, the show? Sex Education. Sex Education. Sex Ed, yeah. Okay, yeah. And she, this is the other one. Is she, is this a girl from our, are you ready? Or, uh, the, the wedding thing where? Yes. Yes. That, she, that's a girl. Um, uh, yep. Where she gets married to a like so, cult, a cult or something, they kill her. Yeah, try um, to kill her. And I, I, uh, I, I love that you know they're hopefully they keep on continuing semi high profile first kills. Right? Yeah. So so yeah. she we find her in a nice I, I like her dress and she's really sexy. Uh, talking to uh her date, and uh. This typical phone call, and then she gets dragged out of the restaurant because it's a hipster bar, and the guy can't find it. But we we know mm. it's something nefarious. So she she's drawn into an alley where she's killed by Ghostface, like really styled many many times. And in the twist, we immediately see who Ghostface is. It's Flash from uh, Spider Man MCU movie. Flash Thompson from yeah. Sporting a uh, long hair and some uh, like a weird goatee, but I'll take it. And we follow him home. Uh, he meets Tara on the uh, on the street. Oh, we forget uh, an important an important uh, note about um, the uh, Samara weaving, right? That's the the girl, the, the, yeah, the, yeah. the girl, the hot girl. She's a professor, a film, a film professor, stud, film studies. About Slash slasher films, yeah. and that's the reason why it's like, hey, you're a slasher film expertise, but I was still able to lure you out into a dark alley alone, yeah. and then she gets killed, which is nice, but also like, you know, you're a professor, you're not gonna do that, right? Yeah, but it, it, it's also like a, a little, re I mean, a little realistic, like, it's a public area, you don't think you'd be in danger there, and even when he was stabbing her, there were people walking by, but it's also realistic. I think it would it could happen. Like nobody would mind find something like that. So anyway, yeah, kind of. Yeah, that's a little bit like if something's okay. happening in a dark alley, most people will just yeah, and just go on. So we uh, we follow the the killer, and he's walking home, and in a twist, the killer gets called on his phone by another ghost face, who he assumes is his best his buddy. Because apparently, him and his buddy are planning to do. Of course, they killed the uh, the professor, but they're planning something. Did they mention Tara? I think yeah, they, they mentioned Tara. I think and Sam, right, or something like they were gonna kill them or yeah. They th that was their ultimate goal, but they had you know, a plan. Flash Thompson decided to practice ahead. Yeah, so they had a plan, but and he was because he was going to be given a C. Yeah, so like fucking. Pettiness combined with uh, stupid ideas of grandiose uh, being a killer in movies and stuff. So he he starts up, uh, the, but he, then he realizes that the guy that he's talking to isn't his friend, but another ghost face, and he gets killed uh, in a nice way. He he gets killed opening the ref because uh, that's where the ghost face was leading him, and he sees his roommate, his roommate, or the other. His other ghost face partner dead, so the, and then he gets stabbed and he dies. And then after that, we go back to Sam and Tara. So now, Sam and Tara, after Woodsboro, they move to New York. And uh, is this the first one out of Woodsboro? Uh, Woodsboro? I think so, right? I think all of the other I ones think are. It is. Yeah. So, anyways. 100% sure. So. They go to New York. Uh, Sam and Tara are roommates with Quinn, and their friends, uh, the 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 twins, right? They're twins. 
or brother and sister. At the least. twins, yeah. Yeah, the twins from the original uh, from last movie who survived. Uh, so they're still friends and they're hanging out. Uh, Mindy is girlfriend has a girlfriend named Annika, and uh, I love Annika, the Asian lady. Yeah, so we're getting issues here where uh, Tara's going to college and Sam is being the overprotective sister, which I think is a natural reaction from what happened in the last film. Since last naturally, film, since last film, Tara was the first girl that was supposed to die but she did survive and these guys are just shrugging off stab wounds like uh like paper cuts huh? so pause there and that was the important thing too is half of it i appreciated right like because you don't you don't die in a stab wound that easily right you, like, you, you don't see a lot of people it doesn't mean you're gonna be yeah, running see around. a lot of people survive dozens of stab wounds but yes, yes that's these true. stabs were gut <laughs> no no and then even and, i was surprised. No, no, and i'm not surprised that they could survive i'm just surprised that some of them are running around afterwards like 100 like, percent. like anyway so we'll get back to that so and we get we see uh sam also with a therapist uh i think this guy was kittridge right from the mission impossible series we're gonna be see yes. the original ones and we'll see him in the next one uh, I always like how he speaks, but anyways, so this was a little weird from the guy that reported her for what? I, I didn't understand what she, he was reporting any, her. Any, if you're a, a psychiatrist, any person that is thinking about harming others or harming themselves, but they have to report. Don't, did she say she was going to harm someone? She, she said, said that, that she, she killed so she killed someone. She, no, 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 she said that she, she, she is scared that she liked it or it felt right. Yeah, but that's There's, there was a conversation. That was yeah, but that's so different that was a, from there was a conversation there. To kill someone. You know no, what I mean? No, that's true. Um that's what that's what uh what's that's what uh Sam Sam Carpenter said. Like I said how I felt. I I didn't say I was gonna do it, but that's that's where I, I so I didn't take umbrage with the, the, the psychiatrist reported her. What I took umbrage was the psychiatrist was pressing for details. Now he finally gets detailed, yeah, so it's and like, then he says he's not prepared. Yeah, yeah. Then don't fucking. And she gets scared. Yeah. He gets scared. Like uh, he didn't seem like an experienced psychiatrist to me, or well, like, like I mean, so like... I I thought that um, you know, I thought it was a misdirect where he was gaslighting her, and you know the the yeah, yeah. the psychiatrist is one of the killers then. Yeah. So it's like at this point, everybody's everybody that they, everybody that is named, or everybody that is a, a real actor in the movie. I was like, okay, one of these is gonna be the killer. I know. Like he, I said, that's a killer. Uh, Kat was laughing at me because I was like, okay, he's a killer. Oh, she's the <laughs> killer, and he's like, Kat's like, everybody's a killer. I was like, that's the point of the movie. Everybody's a killer. So anyway, so we get a fight between Tara and Sam because Sam is overprotective again. Uh, then again, Tara was being like a bitch, like, uh... She, well, uh, she wanted to fuck. She wanted to go party and fuck and make her own mistake. Yeah, I know. That's true. Uh, so anyways, uh, there's chemistry between uh, a Chad and Tara. Um, and I do, uh, Kat's Chad. like, me and Kat, like, we like, we like Chad. Like, uh, he was like, he's like the typical frat boy, but lovable. So anyways... Mm -hmm. Uh, we also meet uh, Kirby, played by Hayden Panettiere, who was one of the survivors from Scream 4, if I'm not mistaken, who is now an FBI agent. And he, she is... Uh, she is... investigating the kills with uh, the, uh, one of the main cops who's, who has the case. Bailey, I think his name. And mm -hmm. he's the dad of... Quinn, the roommate Quinn, of Sam and Tara. So anyways, uh, after that, so uh, there's also been like uh, rumors and the narrative has kind of switched with Sam. Like people think she's the one that killed Richie and the, Richie's girlfriend from the first one. She was and, the and the last of one. Everything. And that she masterminded it. So it's like somebody, people are flipping it be just because... She's the daughter of uh, Billy Loomis. 
Uh, so uh, that's the narrative going out, and uh, we get a fight. Oh, we get uh, they get called into. They want to go to the police station, I think, and then they get attacked by by the near convenience store. They go in the convenience store. I like that. Uh, the people try to help her, and there was no. I uh, that so. I like the fact that you know you go into a bodega. There's people even at late at night. That's true. Yeah. It's very bright. That's true. Shotgun. No, it's very hard to get a gun in New York City. So that's not true. But the idea that all right, everybody tried to help. Even the, even the Asshole, owners. Right? I get yeah. through the back, etc., yeah. etc. So all right. So and then uh, they survive long enough that the police come and ghost face kills quite a few people except the sisters. And oh, I did want to know that I do like that, like they're pinning the franchise on these two sisters. Like I like that dynamic, you mm-hmm. know, instead of just one girl. Like oh. the sister dynamic is really nice. So anyway, so they they get invest. Uh, they brought to the police station and Bailey saying that, uh, ghost face the new ghost face is dropping uh, masks of the original scream of the original ghost face. Ghost faces from the first. The- the killers, killers. Yeah. So, so they're like nine, I think, of the original one, and they're like dropping in reverse. So it's like counting down, counting down. down, yeah. And then, uh, they go home. They feel safe at home, and then oh, Sam is also dating a guy who took me a while to to place him, and I realize he's Pug from She Hulk. Uh, uh, that's horny. Oh, I I knew him immediately because he has this weird way of like smile. He sounds and looks like a villain or douchey, but endearing at the same time. I know, like, like I, 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 he's so. Uh, it's like it's like a it's like Chad, like a typical frat boy, but there's something else underneath that charm that makes you like him. So, anyways, uh, he sees that Quinn's about to kill, uh, be killed. And then we get another uh, nice fight scene, and uh, in their hotel, oh, in their apartment. And this is one of the stupid things, one of the stupid moments, where she goes to the so Ghostface is attacking Mindy and Annika, or Annika, and uh, Sam goes to the kitchen, and she takes so long <laughs> because there's no knife. Like she hesitates, like just grab something. Like, 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 like it just took out how long. Get to pick one. How how long she took some to pick up something? And they were dialoguing. They were dialoguing. It, it just it was too long. So anyway, so she picks up the the wooden knife uh, holder and hits Ghostface with it. They escape, and uh, I forgot the name of the boyfriend. Pug Pug helps them with the ladder from the trailer scene, and everybody crosses except. Uh, uh, Annika, who falls Annika. and it kill gets fucked, falling that I high. I loved Annika, but yeah, also she... her guts were coming out of her belly too. So I was like, either way, <laughs> I know. Uh, it was nice of her to make uh, Mindy go first because if she if she went first, they would have both died in that That's in that night. So they go there and they. Oh, we also I forgot to mention that Gail's back and she's still a bitch like before where. After Dewey dying in the last one, she promises the sisters not to not write a to. book about it. And she does write a book about it. And we got a nice scene where Sam tries to punch her and she evades it effortlessly. But Tara get, gets in her. And even I was thought her thought she could be a suspect because maybe Dewey I fucked mean, her I mean, I wasn't thinking about it. I mean, but it, then it, they, it had low chances. Yeah. But I like that they so this is usually we don't we're like the show don't tell people, right? We want we want that better, but the one of the exceptions is like, yeah, since everybody is uh uh a, a suspect anyway, might as well yeah, give us the, the explanations like yeah, no, and, oh and... you're you, you feel that you don't have a career or you don't have like a personality without it. So you break and you started killing for stories like oh, okay. and it it's okay for this franchise because this is for what it's this known franchise. for. In another film, that wouldn't work. But so, anyways, yeah. So, um, 
And I got suspicious with her because she found the place and the cop didn't. And she had a key card to the place. So like, anyway, she, she you. finds something and she brings all of them to this shrine to ghost faces. And I like the shot where there's like a Iron Man style, all of the ghost faces from. Oh, I was going to say, like, oh, your bat suits. Yeah, very, very the well. Bat, the bat um, suits. Curated. Yeah. There's even drawings of all the uh, story that have happened in the last uh, five movies. And then, um, so, so, so they make a stupid plan to try and trap Ghostface in in a crowded park. But then Ghostface turns up in Gale's place, easily kills the uh, easily kills the boy Gale's boyfriend. We didn't even get a name, I think. And then, nope. uh, good I fight, mean. good f- fight from Gale. Like, uh, it 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 was deserving of a uh, like she. She deserved to have fought that hard. Like she didn't go down easily, and uh, all she wanted was like tell Sydney. Oh, so also, um, Sydney, played by Nev Campbell, was supposed to be in the movie, but uh, contract say. negotiations stalled because she didn't get the money that she th- thought that she deserved. Which is great. I appreciate it, but also I appreciate that this franchise still acknowledged why she wasn't there. And they did not kill her off. So I in the future, when they get a little yeah, bit more money, back. she'll be back. Just like there's too many, there's too many people here. Yeah, and too I many think, actors think, and actresses. I think this, with with focusing on these sisters, it's kind of like it's now bigger than Neve. You know, it's bigger than Sydney Prescott. Uh, I like that they shifted the view from Sydney to Billy, and her and and his kid. So anyway, so yeah, Gail puts up a big fight, but still gets stabbed in the end. Uh, though without the killing blow, as Sam and Tara are able to come in, and uh, the paramedics also, and they find the weak pulse. So it's assumed that she'll she has a shot of surviving. And then, uh, so they formulate this plan to make a kill box using the using the the, the shrine. It's a, like a movie theater shrine the to shrine. go space because the there's only. Yeah, there's only one entrance and exit. And this is when I got the Eureka moment. Oh, it's Kirby because the, the, the cop asked, uh, he asked the, one of his, uh, he asked somebody to check in into Kirby and then we didn't hear anything about it anymore. So mm-hmm. I knew that it was like, it was gonna, it's gonna be Kirby. <laughs> and then she disappears. And then we get this nice uh, kissing scene with Tara and Chad. And then he gets stabbed with, uh, Ghost face and another ghost face comes out, so there's two of them. I like the the coordinate choreograph moves. That was badass. Oh, I forgot the scene. Sorry, before like cleaning the knife. Yeah. Uh, so before this, this is my other stupid decision they did. Why did they take the subway? Couldn't they take like that was so Uber scary. No, Again, no. So why? Is it that maybe is that expensive to take a cab? I know it's expensive, but there, but there's so many of them. Take two, two cabs. Two, two cabs, yeah. It's fine. And it's not like I know it's expensive, but this is like life or death. It's not like I'm going yeah. to the subway. I, and then they the took middle. a cab from the from the university to the police station. I know, so it's like. Right. Uh, so I'm just like looking at it. It was definitely to a cinematic choice because it's a lot more thrilling to have multiple people in the train and then you get it wasn't you know it you was get suspenseful. In, yeah but i that's the problem with movies like this because like any train anywhere will never have flickering lights we'll never have anything so that, dark that's not something i i would so that's good that's your that's you you would know that. Yeah, so that's I, that I nice. I nice really thought. tried to suspend my disbelief, but anything during the Subway the scene. train sequence, I hope that they only made it like a few minutes where they were all paranoid, looking at all of the ghost face masks, etc. That would have been fine, but like to to be like to for no one to see anything, it's just you know, it's it's not even highly unlikely. It is impossible. It's New York. It's the train. That's what the announcement says all the time. If you see something, say something. So I just so, didn't 
So that I thought I I was very hopeful that they will pull off the train scene, but they, for me they did it. I yeah, kind of hated it for them. Well, that's uh that's a good uh point of view from somebody from New York. Because for me, it worked. The scene worked, except the decision to mm. use it. That's the only thing that mm. turned me off. But anyway, so um, I do like Mindy and like the scenes where uh, she like I I I I, I, I didn't guess it again. I just guess it right again. And uh, uh, so anyways, we go back. I... So, Ethan, pala, their virgin well... friend, also. It, <laughs> so Sydney got uh, Mindy got separated from the main group, and he, she stayed with Ethan. But she was like staying away from Ethan because she was suspecting him. But Ethan, as, as soon as she was styled by Ghostface, Ethan helps her out and calls for 911. And then uh, we go back. To, oh, you're going to say something? No, I was like, let me know when we can uh, confirm our guesses. Because like for me, I, I, I knew who the killer was very, very early on. Oh, for me, no. I just, I, I was, as I told you, I was suspecting everybody. But yeah, the dad was... Uh, so anyways, they, we get to the kill box and yeah, Tara make outs with Chad, but he gets attacked. They eventually gets stabbed with the two two ghost faces. And then uh, Bailey calls, calls Sam and says that Kirby's been fired from the FBI and she's the number one suspect. So I thought it was her. And then they have the confrontation, but suddenly Bailey shoots... Uh, Kirby and the two ghost faces come out and it's a family of ghost faces with the killer being revealed to be Kirby uh the cop oh sorry the, the killer alive, being Kirby? no the, the killer being Bailey the cop uh, no, Quinn no Bailey's the dad right? Bailey, Bailey's the dad Bailey's the dad Quinn the daughter who was supposed to have been one of the supposed victims supposed to be still dead alive. and Ethan who turns out to be and their Ethan brother, the virgin the virgin to be their brother so yeah, we gotta. It was a little. I, I don't know. Maybe the reveals are always not as hyped as the the, the guessing or the mystery. But yeah, uh, it was one of the not the highlights. But it was still. I feel it's still as soon as after they revealed it, it warmed up to me. I liked it how they were all fucked up. They're all crazy. This one was a shrine to Richie, and it's a, his firstborn son, and he helped him collect these stuff. And he knew that she killed him. Uh, so we get this chaos where uh, these three fight. And I love how uh, how slowly by slowly, like, Sam is embracing his Billy Loomis legacy. This is where... Yeah, yeah thing, it's, it's, it's saving her. This, this scream is really... That's one where I hope they pursue it and make it more deeper and uh evolve it because it's it's really i i really like they get the the sam is i i hope that she uses the the killer in her to kill the killers so we'll see yeah because uh you know sydney as cool as sydney prescott is she's she's the prototypical final girl of many many slashers and sam is like uh the modern take our version of like the killer, but uh, she's descendant of the original killer, and she has some of it in her, not a lot. So, uh, anyway, so we get this big fight. Uh, I love the I love the fights here. Nothing was really dragging or boring. Uh, we end up with them trying to escape up top, and then uh, Tara slips, and uh, Sam's trying to catch her, uh, pull her up, but she's slippery. And Quinn is coming up to attack Sam on the upstairs, on the upper box. And then uh, Ethan's waiting for Sam to fall, uh, Tara to fall. And Tara, Tara to fall. We, we get a literal let me go scene from, from the first <laughs> scene. I, I like it. Instead of the metaphor, it became literal. That was like a nice twist. Mm-hmm. Where we had an argument before that Tara needs uh, Sam to let her go and live her life. And this one is a scene where... It's literally let me go. I can handle myself. Literally against a killer. So Sam gives her a knife. Literally letting you go into the arms <laughs> of the killer. Yeah. Giving her a knife and then Tara stabbing Ethan in the in the, in the mouth. And then Quinn gets uh I was actually before that too, I was very I was very happy that I subverted the 
expectation. I thought like, oh, Tara, Jenna Ortega is going to fall right into stabbing Ethan. That's it. No. When Tara falls, she gets stabbed. <laughs> I know. I, I, <laughs> she gets like, stabbed first. First. So I, like, oh. which, is, which is also good because it's like uh, in the Wheel of Time, there's a move. Well, this, she didn't do this on purpose, but there's a move in the Wheel, in wheel of Time, like Ran. He is taught a move by, by Lan when he was learning the sword. Na, there is an attack where you open your side so that the guy can strike you, but it's not a killing blow. It's not a killing blow. So you can drive the, yes. your sword for a killing blow. So that's what happened. He, she gets stabbed, but she stabs Ethan through the, through the mouth. And then Quinn gets shot in the, straight in the forehead. And then yeah, and I love that they reiterate always shoot them in the head. Yeah, and then but she runs out of bullets. So for and for some reason Bailey runs at her with a gun, <laughs> and not just shoots her. Like she runs, she runs literally with a gun, and they collide and they fall. Bailey wakes up, and we got Sam being ghostface. Ah, oh, this I I love the scene. I love the sequence, and it's just uh, you, she even used the modulator right. It, it was Ghostface. Yeah, like, yeah, was she was, phone. Yeah, yeah, she was using the modulator in the phone, carrying um, carrying Bailey, and then fucking brutally stabbing him many, many times in the sides of the vest, which I love the small detail, because she know he, sh- he was wearing a vest, so she was going on the sides of the arm. So that's the other thing, the too. I, it's obvious that Bailey is still alive. Right? Because, like, he was moving a lot after that. I know it's mostly the arms and a little bit on the neck. Oh no, we'll he stabbed during the he stabbed during said... the he stabbed during the eye. No, oh, no, so, sorry. So oh, yeah, she yeah, was yeah, she was stabbing him, and then Tara comes, and this is where I I, I should have oh, expected I like it, it but it got it, it didn't surprise me. Like so, Tara comes in as she was stabbing him many times, and she's like, uh, she goes all like Billy Loomis, like her dad on killing, and then. When she sees Tara, she realizes like, "Oh shit, I'm gonna be. I I, I don't want to be a monster." But then Tara gives her, gives her the fucking Permission. nod. Yeah, like fuck the you. Up. I was, I was like, I, I thought Tara was like gonna be scared of her because she's like a killer. But then, yeah, I I, I, was, I thought that you know Tara was also going to turn a little bit on that moment. But I'm happy that they did. Uh, yeah, and then like after everything, like fuck. They mess with their family, so he stabs him right in the eye. And then Ethan sort of is alive, which I think is plausible because when you stab in the mouth, if it's not deep enough, it might not have pierced like the spine or something. I mean, it should have because the knife was long, but I mean, maybe it was... We've seen like in Fight Club, the, the bullet went out the side. So maybe if it's not straight enough... But it would she have just... turned the thing. There we go. But anyways, he's still alive but gets shot by Kirby. Who's still alive? I don't know how she's still alive. She got. I know shot. Kirby uh, dropped a TV on her. On oh, him. him, him, him. Okay, yeah, TV. But I don't know how she's alive. They didn't show that she had like a bulletproof vest because she got shot by Bailey, right? In the start, uh, when they were yeah, doing the face off. Yeah, and got stabbed too. Yeah, and you got the stab. Yeah, well, people are shrugging the stab wounds left and right here, but she did get shot when Bailey shot her, so multiple times. So I don't mm. know how they, how they, how she survived, but. Yeah, and then um, so we got that scene. Uh, I love the scenes with the. That, I, that was my favorite part, by the way, is uh, when when Kirby got shot and got stabbed and fell down. Uh, Sam came in and pulled, and pulled the knife. Like, Are you okay? Sorry, but I need I'll, this. But I'll need this. <laughs> Sorry, I need this. Just twisted the pulls that I want. No, yeah, that I was better. <laughs> and then um, yeah, I do love all the Billy Luma scene, like talking to. I know it's all in his in her, in her head, and it's like realistic in a sense. Like you know, you have this you have this fear in your brain of your of being becoming like your father. So it's lit, and then maybe she has mental problems also. It's gonna exacerbate. And yeah, she's I I I also love the shot where the image of Billy is like on the ghost face as she's talking, looking the, at the ghost face. The, the- Deep fake of Ethan Hawke is in the reflection near Ghostface. I like it. It's is that like Ethan, it's poor is that Ethan Hawke? What's his name? Uh, the actor? Ah, uh, sorry. Um, uh, Skeet Ulrich, right? Skeet Ulrich. Skeet Ulrich. Yeah. I, I'm, uh, yeah. Is it? It's him, right? But I don't I like, think. 
it's really him. It's not, it's not I, like the. It's, I think he's just deep fake, but. Because in the first one, he was really there. Like, he was appearing behind her and stuff. Yeah. Maybe they made him younger. So, well, it doesn't younger. say here, but, you know, it's deep fake him. So. Oh, it's here. Yeah, okay. See, it's Keith Ulrich as Billy Loomis. Okay, he's here. So maybe they just tried, to, maybe just tried to make him younger or something. The age, yeah. Yeah, the age. So anyway, so and one of the biggest twists also is like the core four survived. Uh, we get Mindy <laughs> running from the. Well, here's the thing. That was the most surprising thing. Even the core uh, one, Chad, who's been barraged with stab wounds, still talking. Not a problem. <laughs> and not only that, her sister Mindy stabbed in the gut. <laughs> Running like, like literally in the worst. Place she wasn't even holding running. it. She wasn't even holding it. Like I she's did. Hurt. There was a voiceover at the end. It's like, oh my god, I. They give me so many drugs. So okay, you're trying. <laughs> I mean, they they did you're prep trying, it. But they I prepped just it hope also they like. Uh, I don't know if it was. Uh, it was the boy. It was Spug who said that. Oh, they couldn't even keep Mindy from the hospital to make it soften the blow that we're gonna see her running. <laughs> like what the fuck. I mean, it is yeah, possible I, if I you're hyped up on uh, enough medicines, like, but at least, at least make her act like she's hurt. <laughs> she, was, she was running like, shit. But yeah, I like, uh, that it was a li- for me, it was a little too much, <laughs> but you know what? You're right. It's like, they're, they're emphasizing that the good thing about it is like, you can be brutal. You can stab people multiple times, but that's never the end all be all of everything. You need to be literally shot in the head. Yeah, and, and uh, like Mindy said, the twist of the, the twist in the twist is that they all survived. So uh, yeah, and um, the boyfriend turned out to be good, calling their enforcement. Love it, love it. I I eventually. Hope Dan that. is the name, right? I I don't even know if they I, named that dude. I know they just call him the cute boy, the cute neighbor. Yeah, but yeah, that boy. is that is Scream Six. Uh, amazing. Again, we, we've discussed it a little bit, but this is the point of our episodes where we you know, give our final thoughts and our rating. Again, I'll start so that Shabak should have a little bit of time to get this rating. Um, here's, here's the weird thing. Uh, I will give this a higher rating than what I gave Scream 5. Yes. 6. So I think this is a 7 because this is much more entertaining. Like again, it's right. I like the description. Bigger budget, more cast, bigger cast, more famous people, more cameos, more gruesome death. So for me, much more entertaining than Scream Five. Right? But I like Scream Five more. Right? Because Scream Five, the allure of the requel. That was the first time that we were kind of been introduced to this self-awareness that this is going to be a franchise this is going to be a sequel but a reboot right <laughs> so i love that fact that kind of like really reframed what how i see uh, this movie uh, and i just do love like i i i find this much more entertaining because <clears throat> like i said at the onset when i heard that quinn's dad was a cop who got transferred when they moved here it's like i knew it it's Quinn and the dad. One hundred percent, I knew it truthfully. Um, Ethan, when he said he was a virgin, I figured like, oh, no. I mean, hopefully that he doesn't die and he's not the killer because he's gonna die a virgin, which he did. So, um, <laughs> I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the action. We talked about the pacing of all the deaths, which was extremely great. Um, there were moments there where Sam, I was very impressed with Sam being like the bad guy or breaking, being looking crazy. Um, but there were also a few moments where it's like, oh, you're you're not, you're you're better when you're acting crazy than you're trying to be nice or good. So I think that's. I hope they you're right. I hope they lean into it, in, lean into that on the next movies. Um, and I really believe Jenna Ortega just wanting to have fun here. Right, it's much more. Um. Uh, it's much more interesting for me, right? So, like, she's a regular girl. Everything yeah. is nice. So, I, I really enjoy that. So, overall, I think we are 
I think we are uh, moving away from the years ago. We all wanted to figure out who the bad guy is. Mm -hmm. I think we're now moving into a level where it doesn't matter who the bad guy is. It's like the motivations and what are the connections behind that. So I like that. I it, This is fine. I think this is a great um, way that the, the series is introducing it. But yeah, in the end, I give this as a 7. I will go with an 8. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know if I'm just biased because, you know, I have a big crush on Jenna Ortega. And actually, Sam also. She's she's really... I, I like her. She's, like, badass. And I just... Uh, I do. I, I don't know. I like the cast. I like Mindy. I like Chad. I like uh, Pug. Uh, the, the change of setting was nice. You know, the New York... Um, and I love that they just keep playing with the with the trope in the the slasher film, but uh, they do it with care, you know, like how they did the intro or the typical. We still got the expected uh, first girl kill, but then we immediately hop on to this walk of like, oh shit, we saw his face. Oh, we're following him. Oh shit, he's gonna get called. <laughs> and it leaves a ghost face. Like, oh fuck, he's gonna die. He's dead again already. <laughs> I, I, I like it. So technically, it's like Tamara Weaving wasn't even the first girl. It was like, it's this, it's Flash Thompson, and that was the first real kill, right? Because he didn't, the, the real killers didn't kill Tamara Weaving. They, their first kill was uh, the Flash Thompson. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, and um, I can't wait for more. Bring it on. Awesome. All right. Quick and Dirty, Scream 6, available in your streaming service um, in, on, on, in the Paramount? States. It is Paramount Plus, but you can, you know, get it from Amazon Prime and whatnot. So enjoy it. It's a fun movie. Uh, uh, one of those scare, uh, uh, horror comedies that, you, you know, it's a good popcorn movie if you guys want to. If you're on a date. Want something scary so that your date will grab onto you a little bit, but not too scary that they will be traumatized and not do anything after. So enjoy. Um, that is it for our episode uh, today. We are also discussing uh, a new TV series, TV franchise or series season, um, Ted Lasso in our next few episodes. So please stay tuned to that. With that, on behalf of Trebox, I am Jong. We will see you in the next video. Bye.